All right, guys, we've got several big time updates, including an investigation that was launched into Ocean Gate. But the first thing I want to mention, what's going on here? Ocean Gate still advertising Titan trips after human remains recovered from wreckage investigators from the U.S. Coast Guard, Canada, France, and the U.K. working closely to probe into the implosion. But what's going on with Ocean Gate? I went to their website. Let's see what this article says. More than 10 days after the tragedy and a week after it was confirmed, the Ocean Gate website still features available dates for two separate eight-day expeditions next year. The company's future is now uncertain as industry experts have told the New York Post that all planned expeditions to the Titanic have been called off. Uh, it, whether they call them off or not, it doesn't matter. They do not have a submersible now that the Titan has imploded. They do not have a submersible that is capable of going down to the depth where Titanic is. So whether they call them off or call them off or not, that's all anecdotal. It is not possible, but but this is pretty remarkable. And I ended up going to their website, explore the world's most famous shipwreck. Well, I certainly agree with that. Uh, you can see Titanic Expedition, Explore the Titanic. And I'm guessing this is what the article was referencing. 2023 expeditions currently underway. Inquire for available dates. That None of that is happening. 2024 ex expeditions. First mission in June. Actually, both missions in June of 2024. Their website, you know, you go to the submersibles page and they still have the Titan listed they have two different submersibles. Titan is the only one that can travel that low. Titan is the world's only carbon fiber submersible capable of diving five people 4,000 meters. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> Sorry for laughing, guys. But yeah, obviously Titan is imploded. And then the other one that they have, it looks more traditional in the sense it is the Cyclops 1. It can also fit five people. It has a bigger viewing porthole, kind of like a half circle. Uh, but the reason, you know, they didn't use this one to go down to the, to the Titanic, a lot of people were wondering, like, and honestly, I'm kind of wondering as well. It is such a small porthole. Trust me, don't get me wrong. I love the Titanic, but would I really risk it? Like, if they gave me a free chance to go down to the Titanic, would I really do that if it's just that little small porthole that we're looking through? Like, I would want a massive window to see it, and then you factor in all the safety concerns, things like that. I will say, a lot of this is hindsight 2020. I'm not saying I would go on this, but when people talk about, oh, there's so many safety concerns with it, why would people do this? You got to remember, they had been doing this time and time and time and time again. So over all of the dives... Ocean Gate and Stockton Rush, they're going to build up credibility. And he's going to say, as he hands out those waivers, that, look, I know the waiver says, you know, you might die, but it's just because we have to do it, we have to cover ourselves against a crazy lawsuit if something catastrophic happens. When you skydive, you have to sign crap. You know, you're going to relate it to things like that. So I do think there is some Monday morning quarterbacking going on. But also, I mean, come on, if you're a billionaire man and, and there were concerns back in 2018, 2019, Ocean Gate, I believe, was sued in 2018 over concerns of the Titan's safety and its multiple submersible experts having concerns. Their reward was being fired by Ocean Gate because they had concerns over the submersible. But yes, Ocean Gate, their page is still up. I don't know what the next step is. I mean, has anything like this happened to where, you know, Ocean Gate is basically done? Do they remove everything? I mean, they cannot go to the Titanic. They do not have a submersible capable. There's barely any submersibles that are capable to go that low. I also tried going to their team page, you know, to see the different people. I wanted to see if they still had like Stockton Rush. And I mean, they just, uh, they must have nuked the page or something. It says page not found on that one. And then we also have RMS Titanic probing if Cavalier Stockton Rush misled them to get PH Nargilet aboard doomed sub. So here we go. This is kind of the beginning to this whole investigation. 
Uh, the Titanic Foundation, spearheaded by the sub victim, is probing Ocean Gate head Stockton Rush's claim of how safe his vessel was ahead of the fateful dive on June 18th. Rush was a Cavalier guy, according to RMS Titanic President Jessica Sanders, who is now reviewing whether the organization should have ever let Nargilet board the vessel, which Rush told potential passengers was way safer than flying in a helicopter or even scuba diving or even crossing the strait. So apparently Stockton Rush was telling people it's safer than crossing the strait. And, you know, if you're Stockton Rush, it's such a niche thing. You really have to sell yourself, especially to these rich people, because it's such a narrow window window with how much these dives cost. You're going to have to charge people a quarter of a million dollars, a lot of money. Actually, I think he was probably upcharging people pretty significantly, considering there were leaked text messages that came out that someone, another billionaire, Stockton Rush had lowered the offer to 150000 from the original two hundred and fifty k. so I'm guessing he was up charging all these billionaires to go down there, but it still costs a significant amount of money to actually fund the submersible mission down to the Titanic wreck because it is such a rare thing to do. The Titanic Foundation is now reviewing past records in wake of the tragedy and questioning the truthfulness of Russia's statements, we have now our own internal investigation about Ocean Gate and the things that they claimed. So that is another internal investigation going on there. Back in 2018, the Marine Technology Society sent a letter to Rush warning him of the critical importance that its prototypes undergo proper third-party testing before being taken to such depths to ensure the safety of its passengers, but Rush allegedly refused to do so. And then we also have this, a cameraman who took a test dive in the Titan sub said that OceanGate CEO was flustered with the submersible's comms going out but tried to make light of it. Uh, So all of this stuff is coming out. This was back in May of 2021. Brian Weed, who is a camera operator for this Discovery Channel, in the series Expedition Unknowns, told the AP that the vessel's communication systems went offline and failed. That was back in 2021. You could tell that he was flustered and not happy with the performance, Weed said of Rush, but he was still trying to make light of it, trying to make excuses. So it seems like there were some issues with this whole situation. You know, there was, I was uh, listening to a podcast where. They were showing Stockton Rush, they were doing an interview with him, and he was kind of bragging about how rinky-dink the entire thing was, and he said, yes, a lot of this is kind of unorthodox, but a a number of things can fail, and it won't matter. Apparently, they only had one button on Titan to go up and down like an elevator, and of course, the viral footage, or the viral image of the controller, which controls the movements of it, that cost around $30 as well. So we will have to see how this situation does develop. You know, Ocean Gate still offering those things. You're probably going to want to take those down. It's just, it's not, it's not going to happen with Ocean Gate. And I think this is really going to put a wrench into anyone going down to the Titanic wreck, at least in the near future, which... You know, it's not like people are going down there every day, let's be honest about it, uh, but it is something to where you're going to have to be more cautious, they're probably going to put more laws in place, but I, again, I will stress, this was, the goal of Titan was to fit as many people as possible, still try and make it safe, obviously, but you want to fit more people because it is for profit, it costs money to go down there. Ocean Gate is making money. They want to fit as many people as possible. So they had to compromise, in my opinion, the design a little bit, compromise a little bit of safety to fit one or two more people that are going to make them 250, you know, more thousand dollars per dive. That's a very good investment if you can manage it. There's a little bit more risk with doing that. And unfortunately, we see the risk did not equal the reward with the result of the implosion. And we will have to see how all these investigations turn out. Yesterday, we got the images. A lot of people surprised. 
that they were able to recover huge parts from the implosion. You know, when you look at the implosion, you can understand there were going to be pieces of it. I was very surprised to see the amount, like that big, uh, what was it, tailpiece that they recovered. Also, the entire, you know, nose of the porthole as well, all together. I'm guessing it's because those areas were outside of the Titan submersible and and more exposed to the ocean, so they could just kind of snap right off and float to the bottom where they were discovered about one-third mile from the RMS Titanic bow section of the wreck. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.